Rumors of twilight, dream superstitions, murmur my mind with medieval fear. Armies, famines, and people on the move dwindle with the peace as the fulcrum slips. Epochs alternate, the virus mutates, and politicians lie through rictus grins, hoping the meniscus will not rupture. The tarot reader smiles and turns the cards. The hierophant reversed, she stops to think. Graham Roos is a British producer, writer and performer. He's worked on stage, television, radio and is currently creative artist in residence at Buckingham University and is artistic director at Seven Star Productions. So I'm so pleased he's joining me today here at the OSO Arts Centre in Barnes. Welcome. Hi, Belle. Lovely to chat to you. Yes, you too. I want to start by asking how you got into acting and why you mm. love working on stage. Uh, I got into acting when I was at rugby school, uh, which is why I was at school, uh, and I just took to it like a duck to water. And I, but I was a bit of a swat until I took the role of the Artful Dodger in Oliver, and it's never left me, shall we say. And through that I went to Great Eastern Stage School, which is sadly no longer with us. I know Jason Bradbury, who presents the Gadget Show, he was there, and the director, Indu Ruba Singham. Uh, so it's produced from quite good people, but I, I, sadly I don't think it is with us any longer. Um, and then I went to university where I wrote, started writing and directing my own stuff, um, which I became more interested in than just performing. Although I still perform my own work, particularly if it's poetry, I and mean, it's, a, it's a, a, an epic narrative that I've written. I like to do that myself, but I, I don't act so much anymore. Well, I was going to say, you got into writing and poetry. What what do you love about that artistic form? Poetry, the word poetry can put so many people yes. off. It puts me off, actually, <laughs> because you often think it's a whiny adolescent male talking about why don't people love me and how do I get into her knickers. And, uh, and, and a lot of it is actually whiny adolescent sort of stuff. Or it's highly pretentious, trying to emulate T.S. Eliot, but failing miserably. Um, Although poets like Mark Doty, uh, I love, and Tom Gunn, as modern poets particularly, and Constantine Gavafi and Blake, but this is the simplicity of poetry, having to squeeze an emotion and a world of thought and feeling into a, a finite space. So expressing the infinite in, in, in a finite way, I think, is what a poem does. Um, more so than anything, actually. Where has your work been performed and who have you really loved working with? My work has been performed at, uh, well, all over the place, but King's Place, notably, with uh, Dame Janet Sussman and Fenella Fielding, uh, with the London Song Symphony Extra. I, I was a resident poet for the Royal Opera House for a year on a project called Opera Genesis. Uh, which is helping young composers to write their libretti and how do they write, what's the difference between poetry, verse uh, and lyrics? I mean, because they're all quite similar and the, ba the, the boundaries are very loose and, and, and fuzzy. Um, so that was quite interesting and that led to working for the Sinfonietta and producing a sort of uh, a musical narrative but not sung. Um, I, I did Enoch Hard, which I know has suddenly become very popular, and I know yes. I, did that, I did that in Rome, because that, because at the British School in Rome, because that was, uh, you know, it's a narrative, and sure. it's, and, but it's music and narrative. I'm, at the moment, it's digressing, but I very much want to do something with Byron's Don Juan okay. as, a, as a sort of musical narrative, using the spoken voice as a musical instrument rather than sung. Uh, I've also worked with, um, I did a, a, a sort of opera film with Sadol Sindon and Janet Sussman and Fenella again about Byron called Darkness and it was about a pop star's descent into madness where he thought that he was Byron and he kept having these flashes of previous life. Was he cursed by some ancient oracle? Um, it didn't quite work and I still need to, I'm re-editing that because for all sorts of reasons, I think I was a bit over ambitious, but there were some beautiful bits of it, and it really needs to be reimagined 
with a with a I need to write a new poem rather than cut and paste from Byron's own stuff because there's no thread to it. That's the problem. Uh, and I work with Sir Derek Jacobi, who uh, performed in, in a reading of my play Glue, which is based on uh, the late impresario Alan Sidwright, and it was a black comedy, sort of in the style of Joe Walton. Uh, it was a homage to my mentor, Alan Sidwright, who I love dearly and miss all the time. So, so yes. You've established a wonderful concert series, though, down in, you know, up, up in Buckingham, I should up say. And so how did this materialise? And is there a theme to the concerts? How did you decide what to put on? Tell us a little bit about it. Well, um, Buckingham has this wonderful centre called the Radcliffe Centre, which was, a ch which was a Methodist chapel. And I put on my first play there in 1989. Uh, it's since had a, a major revamp. Uh, it's not quite right for uh, spoken word because the acoustics have those chapel acoustics. Yes. yes. Uh, so, so everything's got a bit of an echo. Um, but they are good for uh, music. So there is a Buckingham music series, but I thought I'd like to do something monthly using that great space and using the great talent you know, available to me, well, thanks to meeting I Yvonne Evans. Yes. So, so it's really through meeting Yvonne that uh, I formulated the idea of, of the Radcliffe series, which is going to be a regular monthly thing. Um, and what I want to do is create our very own snake maltings in Buckingham, and I, I don't see any good reason why we shouldn't do that. That's exciting. Mm. Yeah. And also, you're artist director of Seven Star Productions. Tell us a little bit about that, because I know you got together with Yvonne, and um, she runs this as well. So. Well I, was working, well, I was working. I was working on a, a, a play uh, based on um, the life of Pasqualina Lenhart, who was a nun who moved into the Vatican with Pope Pius XII, causing a lot of controversy. And Pius was the wartime Second World War Pope. There's a lot of controversy about it to this day. And I met him on as a result of this, um, and we started talking. And I said that I was doing this at Buckingham, and she said, "Well." You know, have a look at our artists. Uh, so I started to work with Yvonne on, on a series of things, and it just became a natural, a symbiotic and organic relationship that grew, that we complemented each other very well. So what, what, what I'm hoping to contribute to Seven Stars is to, to keep the text bit going. So what we're doing is Yes, music. We're injecting drama yes. and text. So it's music, drama, and text, which is sort of what I've been doing with the Opera House and Sinfonietta anyway. So it seemed a natural progression to want to continue and expand because people like it. Oh, definitely. Uh, and, 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 and it's interesting because it's educating, it's entertaining, um, but it's also something that not a lot of people are doing, or well, certainly not doing well. Uh, you know, uh, and, and to take narrative and place it with the right music. Well, for example, in, in this the play about the nun, I'm hoping to get David LePage to play the part of a, of a violin playing rabbi who says nothing. So, so we're just using David's skill on the violin to convey a whole history of the persecution of the Jews in Europe in, in the 30s purely through his playing of the violin, and that's things, that is the exposition. Uh, and so the music becomes a very important part of the drama. So sometimes I'm hoping that our productions will be, will lean sometimes more to drama, but they will always have music in them, and sometimes more to music, but maybe with a bit of drama, particularly with the wonderful Susan Porritt, who is yes. such a, an ornament to Seven Stars. She is. She did wonderful. You've got several, several, lots of wonderful Well, we're, we're, we're inundated with wonderful Absolutely. Lots, you know. It sounds very exciting. And of course, how we have you? Myself as well. I'm yes. so looking forward to doing that. For melodramas, yes. Yeah. 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 Have you told your, uh, your, your listeners about that? I haven't yet, no, but music and words. And I'm going to be working with um, Anthony Hewitt, the yes. pianist, and we're doing all the different melodramas by Strauss, Liszt, Pulak, um, also Lisa Lehman, Schubert, so I'm really looking forward to that. Well, and I'm hoping you'll come to Buckingham to do something for us there, because I know we'd all love to hear it. Thank you very much, looking forward to it. And thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you very much, y'all. Love or war, all shall be revealed to you, all areas accessed, 
tabloid sex and drugs in this writhing pagan Colosseum. The mob bays and glories in blood's first trace. The ghost of laughter rips through the ruin and somewhere in the freezing depths of space an ancient dragon sperm fires through the dark packed with frozen hydrocarbons water to re-fertilize this egg start again destroying the parasites with new life where money and fame no longer exist outside time not even a memory